we have named it poo. And in this poo, we assume that there is no, there is no performance, no action, no action. But with reference to, with reference to another level of awareness, which will be the, the self-referral for this, in terms of this and in terms of this both. This awareness, because we have seen two values in this structure of knowledge. Now we get another new structure of knowledge in which, uh, which can be and which must be with reference to this and this at the same time. That means it, is, it has in its structure the self-referral value of this and this. And in this sense, what we have done to this innocent poo value, innocent poo, poo character of it, we have brought it in comparison to this. And therefore, we have done something of a sense of performance, the sense of action to it. So after poo, it becomes puru. So the name of this as purusha is defines for us, the name of this as Purusha defines for us its value in terms of Prakriti and in terms of this totality, total picture of knowledge. So Purusha and Prakriti, these two names we give to the two distinct qualities of pure knowledge, the structure of pure knowledge which is the the life of every point of creation. Because creation is, in its ultimate analysis, the field of pure knowledge, pure knowledge. And the pure knowledge is now seen in this picture in terms of three structures of pure knowledge. This is still pure knowledge, this is still pure knowledge, this is still pure knowledge, but we can see intellectually some kind of uh, differentiations possible in these three structures. So we can say this is the holistic, this is the holistic uh, uh, structure of pure knowledge and this is that part of the holistic structure of pure knowledge which is pertaining to the complete unmanifest value. And this is that part of uh, the structure of pure knowledge, part of this, which is pertaining to to the uh, to the which is pertaining to it being the source of a manifest knowledge, source of manifest, source of manifest, still in the end manifest, but in this it's not the source of the manifest. It is this which is the source of the manifest even though this is almost the same. And even though this is just the same value of this, only off by it. You come this and you create a liveliness on the opposite side of it. This is how uh, looking to, uh, in great in details, in the structure of consciousness, we locate these two fundamental structures of pure knowledge. And from here, all these different, say, eight prakriti and all that is huge structure. So the different structures of knowledge and one structure of knowledge, the source of all these structures and one structure of knowledge which is completely a, a witness to all this and one whole thing which takes in its structure the totality of it, devours everything. And the devourer of the whole, say, Brahman consciousness or it means great the great, grand structure of your knowledge. Mm -hmm. So here we'll make a difference in this, in, in this kind of thing. And what is, what is most 
and lightning today is the that the picture of the world in view of the picture of the unmanifest picture of the manifest in terms of the picture of the unmanifest when you oh, when you describe all these laws of nature laws of nature and and their different implications in the character non changing changing and all that all that it just is the picture of 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 here in terms of here and this is profusely exhibited in nature Fusely exhibited in nature, that all these states of excitation, if we take them to be just a tree, and then state of, of the, these roots here, here, here. So now this branch here, the existence of this branch here, is just on the basis of some root here, and in the root here. One little whisper orders this branch to bring out a mango. <laughs> so the emergence of this whole tree of the universe comes from whispers in the unmanifest, whisper of the sap, whisper of the sap. And when we see these two values of the sap, this way and this way, in this grand analysis. All these structures of uh, of uh, knowledge, with regard to the to these uh, to the whole creation, with regard to all the laws of nature, all these structures of the laws of nature, then could be seen in these whispers, in these whispers. Now, the these whispers are the whispers of pure knowledge, whispers of knowledge, whispers of knowledge structured in consciousness. Whispers of knowledge structured in consciousness, the structures of laws, the structures of laws of nature structured in the consciousness of the knower. Consciousness, consciousness, consciousness. So, the laws of nature in terms of consciousness are the the whole universe in the unmanifest state. The whole universe in the unmanifest state in the fluctuations. Of consciousness, fluctuations of consciousness, and all these in, innumerable fluctuations of consciousness, which which express as the laws of nature and which then in turn create creation, all these expressions or these whispers of knowledge, expressions of consciousness, are the expressions. Of the self-referring state, which we have we have seen, we can talk in terms of the of the infinite spin of life, of consciousness within itself, in its self-referral structure, the pure consciousness. So the all these impulses of pure consciousness. Originate from that core of creativity, which which has a self-referral structure, self-referring mechanics in the structure of pure knowledge or in the structure of pure consciousness. So eventually, we come to all these multiples existing in the nature of the silent consciousness. Transcendental consciousness, and all these multiples in the nature of the silent consciousness have their origin in the pure nature of consciousness, which is just that self-referral. So now we have found one place by handling which we can handle the whole universe, and this is the joy of knowledge that it can organize. The entirety from within its own silent structure, within its own holistic, unified, united, integrated state.